Hello there, my name's Andy from the Engineers Academy and today we're at Time Metropolitan College in order to conduct some material tests. And the test that we're going to be looking at today is the ultimate tensile strength test. We're going to be testing three materials. First of all, we're going to test a sample of brass. Secondly, we're going to test a sample of bronze. And thirdly, we're going to test a steel sample. Now the piece of machinery that we're going to use is the tensile test machine, as you can see here. And when we begin the test, each of these samples of material is going to be loaded between these chucks on the tensile test machine. We're then going to run the program on the PC, and when the program runs, the two chucks on the tensile test machine begin to move apart at a given speed. Now in doing so, they're going to place each of our samples of material under tension. So as the distance between the two chucks increases, I'm sure you can imagine that the tension on the test piece is going to increase. Now that force, or that tension on the test piece, is going to be recorded via our load cell here. Now we're going to run this test to failure. After all, these are destructive tests. So we're going to see each of these samples of material, first of all, stretch through its elastic range, then stretch through its plastic range before eventually necking and failing. We're going to look at two things whilst this test runs. First of all, we're going to zoom in on the test piece so that we can see what happens as it stretches and eventually fails. And secondly, we're going to look at the graph that's produced. And the graph that we're going to be producing is a force recorded from the load cell against elongation or displacement. And that elongation or displacement is a result of those two chucks moving apart. Okay, so I'm going to put my safety glasses on and then we can begin the test. Okay, so our sample of brass has been loaded into the tensile test machine and we've zeroed the displacement and the force. So now what we're going to do is begin the test and see what happens to our sample of brass. So already our chucks have begun to move apart and in doing so a force is being applied to our piece of material. At the moment the forces are relatively low. Now as the piece of material begins to pick up the tension, we're going to see the force begin increasing fairly rapidly. So already we're at 500 newtons, 1000 newtons, and we're going to continue seeing that increasing as the test continues. Now one of the things that's worth mentioning is as that graph is rising linearly, we have elastic deformation. What that means is if we were to take that force off of that piece of material, it should, in theory, return back to its original length. However, when that graph stops being linear, and we're starting to see that now, that piece of material is no longer being deformed by elastic deformation, and it moves into the plastic deformation range. Now, plastic deformation is permanent deformation. It means that that test piece will never return back to its original length, even if we were to remove the load from it. What that means is our piece of material here is being permanently deformed and its yield strength has been exceeded. Now there's a difference between yield strength and ultimate tensile strength. Yield strength is the point where the piece of material is permanently deformed and ultimate tensile strength is the point where the maximum load is achieved. So we can see that the piece of material yielded at perhaps 2000 newtons and we're going to see that the ultimate tensile strength is much higher than that, but we're well into plastic deformation at this point. Now, as we look at the sample, we can clearly see that it's been stretched, and at this point here, our sample of material has been stretched by 12 millimetres. The rate that it's being stretched is five millimetres every minute. So we're seeing quite a significant amount of stretch there. But remember, this piece of material is no longer suitable to be used because it's permanently deformed. We're going to see something different happen now. As that tension gets higher and the ultimate tensile strength is being approached, we're going to begin to see some changes to the sample of material. And what we will begin to see happen is something called necking. And essentially what necking is, is at some point along that sample, the diameter of our piece of material is going to reduce at the point where it's going to fracture. And I think we're going to see this pretty soon. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes when watching these tests, it's difficult to believe that that's a piece of metal, but it has been stretched significantly. And I believe it's about to start necking. Yes, we can see that now. Almost at the very center of the test piece there. And very soon that's going to fail. Okay, perfect. That was our sample of brass. Okay, so next loaded into the tensile test machine, we have our sample of bronze. And once again, we've zeroed the displacement and zeroed the force. And the sample is ready to begin picking up tension. So let's run the test. Okay, now already we begin to see the force changing. The test piece is already under 200, 300 newtons of force. And we can see our graph beginning to be produced, a linear graph. So recall that that's elastic deformation. And the force is rising quite rapidly here. That would indicate that this piece of material is much less elastic. We're already at 10,000 newtons of force and we've only stretched the test piece by three millimeters. That's 12,000 newtons of force. And we're into plastic deformation. So at six millimeters of stretch, we're at roughly 14,000 newtons of force. And in that example, we saw very little necking. Now the reason for that is because the bronze is far more brittle than the brass. So we didn't see any necking. What we actually saw there was the test piece fail without any necking occurring. And it actually failed at the very end of the sample. Okay, and finally we have our sample of steel. So let's begin the test for steel. And once again, we see the force rising quite rapidly. At one millimeter displacement, we're already well above 5,000 newtons of force. Our graph's rising linearly, so we have elastic deformation, but already, the gradient is beginning to change. So we're already into plastic deformation here. And we may see some necking already, judging by our graph. There we go, necking, very close to failure. And there's our graph for steel. So what we've seen there is the UTS test for brass, bronze and steel. And in closing to this video, let's just take a brief look at each of those samples that have been subjected to the test. In the middle, we have our sample of brass. Now, the sample of brass was originally 27 millimeters long with a diameter of five millimeters. And I've sketched on there the original length of that brass sample, and we can see that it has been stretched considerably before it's failed, somewhere in the order of 15 millimeters. So there was a significant amount of plastic deformation before failure. And the other observation that we make with the brass sample is the type of failure. And if we look in this region here, what we notice is that we've had a ductile fracture. And by a ductile fracture, we mean that the material sample has necked before it's failed. 
Let's move on to the second sample from the videos. And on the right hand side here, we have our bronze sample. Now once again, the bronze sample started off at 27 millimeters. So if we compare that to the brass, we can see that there's been very little plastic deformation before failure. So the material bronze is much less ductile than the material brass. The other thing that we observe is the type of fracture. And if we look here, what we see is a different type of fracture. Rather than ductile fracture, we see a brittle fracture. And brittle fractures, there's very little necking before failure. And usually these samples break with a very loud bang. It's an instantaneous fracture. Now the third sample that we looked at was steel. And on the left hand side, we have our sample of steel. Now the difference with the steel was its dimensions at the start of the test. The steel sample was only 19 millimeters long and the diameter was only 3.5 millimeters. So we wouldn't expect that to be able to tolerate such large forces. So what we'll need to factor in in order to get a direct comparison between these three materials is the stress, which is the distribution of the force across the cross section. But looking more closely at the steel sample there, we see a relatively large amount of plastic deformation once again, nowhere near in the order of the brass, but still a significant amount of plastic deformation. And the type of failure we see, again, is a certain amount of ductile fracture. The necking is less significant than with the sample of brass, but there is still necking nonetheless. So I hope you found this video useful, first of all, in seeing how the UTS test is conducted, and secondly, seeing how these three different types of materials respond differently to this type of test. So thank you very much for watching.